What do you feel when you see a travel vlog for somewhere you've never been? Seeing the vlogger's happy face makes you happy too. It's as if you're living vicariously through their experience, but the opposite is also true. Seeing someone else suffering makes us suffer vicariously too. Clinical psychologist Kendra Kubala notes that this is known as secondary traumatic stress, also known as vicarious trauma or compassion fatigue. This is often experienced by people who have prolonged exposure to other people's trauma, such as therapists, doctors, nurses, or first responders. However, there are also cases where those without direct experience with traumatized people may nevertheless feel uneasy, anxious, or even suffer physical symptoms unrelated to their current situation. In this video, let's explore some of the signs it's not anxiety, it's secondary trauma. Discourage others. According to researchers, Carlton Craig and Ginny Sprang, secondary trauma causes emotional exhaustion, which makes a person lack energy and as if they've exhausted their emotional resources. You do not have the capacity to absorb other people's tragedies, so you tend to discourage them from disclosing their trauma. Distancing yourself from the traumatic story is your go-to method to ensure that you are not feeling overwhelmed, especially when your emotional tank is almost empty. Nightmares. You may have never been involved in a horrific car accident, but for years afterward, when you close your eyes, you have nightmares of people screaming at the top of their lungs while a car tumbled into a ravine. You experience this after listening to your friend's story of an accident that she was involved in. According to American Institute of Stress, as dreams are often a reflection of what you feel and observe in the real world, it is not uncommon to have nightmares and anxiety dreams related to the trauma. Nightmares are distressing emotions of worry, terror, humiliation, or threat. Secondary trauma causes the amygdala in the brain, which recognizes potentially harmful situations and sounds the alarm to trigger a fight or flight reaction. Bystander guilt. When you hear a dramatic story of others, do you often blame yourself or feel guilty for not being there to help? The British Medical Association lists bystanders guilt, shame, and feelings of self-doubt as one of the signs of secondary trauma. Psychologist Melanie Greenberg explains that shame is a harmful feeling in which you believe you're innately worthless, unlovable, or incompetent. On the other hand, guilt is the bad feeling you experience related to your behaviors and choices. People with secondary trauma often overestimate the amount of responsibility that they have towards a certain event. For example, a therapist may feel guilty or overextend themselves, attempting to do more than their role to help the client process the trauma. Become resentful. Psychiatrist Julian Lagoy explains that someone who experiences secondary trauma due to their job will usually resent their work or their patients. A 2015 review by researcher Marco Van Mall and colleagues reveals that secondary trauma causes the relationship breakdown between healthcare professionals and the ICU patients. Those working in the ICU constantly experience high stress as they cater to the demands of the patient's family members and are often faced with watching patient suffering. This stress may negatively impact work satisfaction, and they may decide to take prolonged leave or quit their job altogether. They may even become hostile to their patients, whom they should treat with care and compassion. Overprotective. You wear your therapist hat as you listen to your client's stories of being abused when he was a child. When you arrive home after work, your daughter asks for your permission to spend the night at her friend's house, but you say no. This was shared by licensed professional counselor, James Smith. He experienced a change in his parenting style, where previously he was okay with his daughter sleeping over at her friend's house, but later he became overprotective. He felt overwhelming anxiety when his daughter was at her friend's house till she was safe in his arms again. Due to vicarious trauma, he became excessively worried about the potential abuse of his daughter. Become cynical. According to licensed clinical psychologist, Jennifer Hughes, Cynicism or negative thought patterns is a cognitive sign of secondary trauma. The monsters of other people have become your own, which changes your perception of yourself and the world. It's as if you have tossed your rose-colored glasses to the side and worn dark sunglasses instead. Remember, you do not have to let your secondary trauma steer the wheel. If you notice any of these signs, consulting a trauma-trained therapist is the best thing you can do to start on that healing journey. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to share it with your friends and your loved ones. Thanks for watching. And remember, you matter.
Are you looking for a cuddly companion that brings positivity and mental wellness to your daily life? Get your very own Psy. The lovable plushie is here to brighten your days. It embodies the spirit of Psych2Go, and it serves as a reminder to prioritize your mental well-being. Its green leaf symbolizes growth, renewal, and the importance of self-care, whether it's for yourself or as a thoughtful gift for a loved one. Psy is ready to be your snuggly friend through all of life's ups and downs. Buy your Psy plushie today. Link is listed in the description box.